box number one. So we're gonna start from number two here. Right, question number two. Again, I'm going to put a comment here. Question number two. I'm just gonna copy the functions, copy the descriptions here. Right. And uh, let's break it into multiple lines so we can read it. Uh, right. So it's asking me to write the function print int riff. Right. So once I read it here, I know what is my first step. It's just going to create that function. Function print int riff. That takes n. Right, that is my first step. That's always going to be a first step. I right, write a function. I give you a name and the input. And it takes one parameter n, which is this one here, and print all natural numbers in reverse in console from n to 1. Right? So since we already have the question number 1 here, we can just reverse it. And if you do not have a question number one here, so that's that's how we process it. So we're gonna think about it. The start point, right? So we're, we're definitely going to do a loop here because we're going to uh, to print out a, a numbers from a number to another number, from, right? So it's definitely going to be a loop because it's maybe like become from like a thousand to one, ten thousand to one. So we don't want to write like ten thousand code here. So we're uh, using a loop. Is, is definitely the choice. And when we create a loop, we're going to think about when to start and uh, when to stop, right? When to stop. The start point, the start point, and also the, the increment or decrement. Right? There's nothing we need to think about. So the start point, <coughs> so let's read the description again. We are trying to do the functions, print all natural numbers in reverse in console, right? So it's a, the first one is from 1 to n. The second one is reversed. So it's from n to 1. So the start point will be n, right? Start point will be n. And the, when to stop, it's going to be a 1, right? It's reverse thing. Right, first one is from 1 to n, the second one is from n to 1. And then increment or decrement. So the first one is increment, right? From 1, 1 plus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 until n. And the second one is going from n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 until 1. So that's going to be a decrement. And a decrement by 1, right? Every time. And now I can create my loop here. So my loop is going to be a for loop. You can use while loop, it's the same thing. All right, for loop is more common. All right, for loop. And in the for loop, the parentheses, it takes three conditions. When to start, we say that we're going to start from n. So we're going to say variable. Again, we still need an i here, right? Because we're, we're not going to directly change the n. We're going to see the variable index i start from n. All right? And the when to stop is when this i, when this in integer, when this number is getting to 1. So when 1, when, when i is smaller than 1, we're going to stop it. Right? When, 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 oh, sorry. When, it's, this should be going to continue. When i is bigger or, or equal to 1, we want to continue on this loop. Right? So we want to continue this loop. And every time i minus minus. Right? Those are three, three conditions getting to the code. I right, want to start. And uh, want to continue, or we'll say want to stop. Right? Uh, I minus minus is a, it, it, every time we, we do the loop, we repeat the loop, it's going to be a, do a decrement on the I. <coughs> right? So now I have a loop. And uh, if I just try it out, so if I do a console.log uh, hello here, right, just try it out, see how it looks like. And if I want, want to write, again, you can just <coughs> call the function name, print int riff 4. Right, I just want to try it out. <coughs> and uh, to write, I'm going to, again, I linked my code to the index HTML. Right, so I can just open this one in the live server. It's going to show in here. Open the <coughs> console. Right, so I have the hello four times. Right, let me just refresh it. I have a hello four times. And I have to put 5 here, 
it's going to print out hello five times. But so the the question is asking us to print out the numbers from n to one. So I'm not going to print out hello here. I'm going to print kind of like some number here, right? So maybe print one here, maybe one five times. I want to print out the number that's changing, right? Changing from the n to one. Um, in this in this function, there is only one number that is changing, which is i. Right, i start from n and get into one. That is the only number that is have the decrement here. It's changing. So we're gonna print out i in this case. So i is ch is a number changing from n to one. Right, first time we run it, i equal to n. Second time we run, i equal to n minus one. And last time we run, i equal to one. Right, so once you save it, you should be able to see the result. Right, if you have to print into 5, it's going to go 5. It's going to 10 here, it's going to go from 10 to 1. And this is our answer for this question. Right, just a, <coughs> a for loop, three lines. <coughs> if you compare this one with, a, with the first question here, it just go reversely right this one start from one so we start from n this time and it's it's going to increase stop at n we go decrease stop at one that is question number two right and let's see the next question number three Right. So question number three. Let me just copy the description here. Right. I'm taking one parameter string now. Um, I just, uh, just uh, you don't have to copy the description. It just some. Um, um, it just it's good to have it, but it's not required. Right. It's good to have it, but not required. All right, so let's read the question here. Write the function check input. All right, so I know what is the first step. I'm going to write this function check input. Function check input. It takes uh, one parent of x. Right, that is my function. Oh, sorry, I'm going to put this one right here. I'm going to comment it out. That's for the last question. That's for the last question. All right, check input. It takes one parameter x <coughs> and return the string number if x is a number return string string if x is a string and return string boolean uh, return string boolean if x is a boolean otherwise returns negative one right so well the, the question is actually very obviously they have like a if 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 so we're gonna use the if cases here, right? If this is happen, we do that. Sorry. All right. So if another thing is happen, we'll do another. We'll do another option. So if cases are definitely gonna be used here. All right. So we're gonna have some, some if uh, something. All right. Uh, else if something. All right. So. All right. So if I'm gonna say if. Again, we're gonna do some comments here. All right, so firstly, check if x is number, and then if x is a number, right here we're gonna check if x is a number. You can do the, um, the, the case thing, right? Yes, we can do the case, it's the same thing. Let me make the font size bigger, so easier for you to see it. I forgot that. Right, so if x is a number, right, I'm gonna put this one just, just inside here. Right? If x is a number, we want to print number, right? If x is string, we print, actually return a string, right? It's not print. This is here, we'll say the return. So I'm going to return. Return number, return string. And else if x is boolean, let me say e here. And uh, we're going to return boolean. And uh, all other cases, otherwise return negative one, right? 
Right, so first thing first, so to return a string number, string, string and string boolean, we're going to make it as a string. Right, make it as a string. So add a condition marks to those return statements. And the semicolon. Right, so by doing that, we already have like a, the different return statements. And the hardest point for this question is we need to have a way to check x is a number, x is a string, or x is boolean. How do I check it? And the hint here is you can using the JavaScript type of, right? So if you Google search JavaScript type of, it's going to bring you to its, uh, the document page, tell you like what is a type of here. What is a type of? Right, simply uh, give an example here is like if you say type of five, it's going to tell you that it's a number. If you say type of hello, it's going to tell you that it's a string. We will do a type of uh, two as, as it's a boolean. Right, that is how you're going to use type of here. So what we want to know the type, we want to know the what is the type of x. If x type of x is a number, we will return a number. So we're going to check in the type of x. Right, if I just put it here, I don't really know what is x because we didn't define it here. But we have x inside the function. Right, so to check if x is a number, so we can do if the type of x is equals to number. Right, so if type of x is a number, it's going to tell me that's going to be a number. So this this equation is going to give you a, give me a true. Right, if x equal to five, x equal to six, x equal to a hundred, it's going to give me a number, so I can return the number out. And here we're going to check in if x is a string. So it's going to be if type of x is a string. Right, so we know we can just print our string. Oh, yeah. And the same same thing here. If type of x is a boolean, yeah, right, then we just return out a boolean. And in all other cases, just return negative one. Let's try it out. So if I console dot log, right. So to run this function, you need to do a console log. So we have return here. You need to, you need to put the function inside the console log. Check input five. I should give me a number, and it does give me a number. Check input uh, hello. It tell me okay, this is a string. Check input force. That is pulling. Right, if I put an array here, like array one, two, three, it should give me negative one, because it's the else case. Right, so we can also improve these answers here. This is not the easiest uh, solution for this one. Right, again, some some students say we can use in switch cases. Right, so if you want to solve it with switch cases, right, this just this. So this is a solution number one. Right, so put it here. So you may you may come up with a, a, a lot of like different kinds of solutions. Let's come up with solution number two here. Right, solution two. So we can do a switch. So it depends on the type of x. Right. So if type of x, for the case, if that is a number, we return number. Right. And for the case of string, we return string. And for the case of uh, boolean, we we'll return boolean. 
and the default will return negative one. Right? So you can also do it with the switch case. It also works. Okay. How does that work? How do we know that that works? Try it out. One, two, three. Let's give you a number. Try it on the screen. Let's give you a string. If you try it on the array, it'll give you negative one. Alright. So if I switch on, if type of x is equal to number, it returns number. If type of x is equal to string, it's Return string. If type of x is boolean, it returns boolean. If type of x is something else, it's just going to go to the default case, returns negative 1. Would you take off any points because it doesn't come out how you wanted it to come out? Huh? Would you take off points if it didn't come out how, how you wanted it to come out? Oh, uh, like, of course. Let's say if you put, no, but what I mean exactly is like, you see how, how you did that right there? Mm -hmm. And it, it said the, uh, what's that bro? It said the output but it didn't say it with the quotations. Would you take off points for that? Quotation? Well, do it one more time. Yeah? What do you mean by do it one more time? Like, <laughs> go ahead, do that one. This one? Let's give you a negative no, one. No, let's not do that. Do like false or something. False? Yeah, it's going to give you a boolean. Yeah, but you see how it says boolean? You yeah. wanted it to return a string. This is a string. Cause it's just a whole string displayed in the in, in the console. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, it, it, see here we return the the the, the, the quotation mark string. You, you're not gonna do it like this, this one this way. This is not gonna, This is not correct. Oh. You you will never see some. Uh, uh, any case you need to return something like that. Right? If you just return string, just return string. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you not you won't lose point for that. Yeah. Okay. It's not something. Uh, really matters. Right. So. So this is the second solution, and we also have more solutions for this one. All right, so you can see, actually, we are trying to do some stupid things here. All right, so this is like what, what type of x equal to number, where it returns number. Well, basically, it's returning a type of x. Right, a type of x is string. We're also basically just returning a type of x. If a type of x, type of x is boolean, we also return the type of x. So these three conditions actually can be combined into one. Because here we basically just, just return the type of x. Right, so if a number we just return type of x. Right, so here comes up the third solution. Right, so I'm gonna put it right here. Solution number three. So if type of x is equals to number or type of x is equals to string or type of x is equal to boolean. Right, I'm gonna make it longer so you can see it. And I'm gonna make a string make make a make it smaller. 26. Uh, still too big. Oh, okay, it's just uh, right. So it's gonna make it different lines. So then we can just return type of x, right? And else we just return negative one. So if x is either number, string, or boolean, we just directly return the type of x. Otherwise, return negative one. Is there a name for that? Um, that's just a whole if state. That's the name of that, that solution? Uh, there isn't a name for that. Well, it's not a name, it's just, you're just using the or. Yeah. You can do the or and. Yeah, if type of x equal to number, we we'll return type of x. Because you see, the, the, the first three cases here, if type of x is a number, return number. The number here basically is a type of x. Right. The type of x is a string, or we'll return string. A string again is just the type of x. Same same thing for here. If type of x is equals to boolean or return boolean, the same thing say if type of x equals to boolean or return type of x. Right, so this three can be combined. And even shorter, you can say create a variable here. Variable type is equal to 
type of x. And here you can see if type equal to that, type equal to that, type equal to that, and returns type. It's right, so the same thing. Let me just break them into multiple lines so you can easily see that. Right? So that's uh, another way to solve it. Also, this one can be read with uh, uh, op, uh, the what's that called? The, let me check it. So, remember we learned a uh, ternary operator options for that, right? That can be also writing as a ternary operator. That's probably the shortest way, right? Yeah, it is. Also, the switch cases also works. Yeah, okay. yeah we can also transfer it into switch cases. But since we already have the solution number two, we're just not going to do it for the switch cases. We're going to use the ternary operators for this one. So let's come up with the solution number four, writing with a ternary operator. Solution number four. All right, so we're going to return, uh, again, we'll just create a variable type, which is a type of x. All right, just uh, make it shorter. So we don't have to repeat ourselves the type of x, type of x three times. So we're gonna say um, we're gonna return if right, type equals to I'm gonna repeat what we just did last time. Type equal equal to number or type equal to string or type is equal to uh, boolean. Right, if one of them is true, question mark, is that true? We're going to return type. Else, we'll return negative 1. Right, so it's, it's a shortest version of it. If this is true, return type. Else, return 1, negative 1. But again, all those four solutions are identical, so they all give the, s the same uh, result. But you know, the, the, the shorter, the better. So if you can make it the shortest, you can just use it the shortest way. All right. The question mark was after type, right? Uh, before the type. Yeah, sorry. Before the type. Right, before type, we're checking if this one is true or false. If this is true, we'll return type. Else, we'll return negative one. It's before type. Right, first solution, uh, the, if it's true, we're going to return the scene uh, before the column. If it's false, we'll return the scene after the column. So basically, just one line. All four solutions are acceptable, right? And now let's go to the question number four, right? Question number four. All right, so this one, uh, let me make it bigger so we can see the question. Question number four. I'm gonna cancel comment this out. Question number four. I'm just gonna copy this one here. Alright, right, so this one again, first thing to do, checking the function name. Write a function simple even ending. Alright, we're gonna again function. Simple, even, ending. That takes a noun. Right, that's the first step. And this one asks us to okay, taking a number and add up all the even numbers from one to noun and return it. Right. 
So we are adding all the even numbers from one to now, right? So we can think about it in the easiest, easier way. Like, if, how about I first think about how to add all numbers from one to now? Instead, I just ignore the like even problem. Just adding all the numbers from one to now, right? So again, we're adding something. We're, we're, we're trying to go one to a number. Let's maybe go one to a hundred to a thousand. So again, we're going to use a loop this time. Because right, it may go to infinite, infinite numbers, right? So we're not gonna just put a, a, a five or six lines code here. We're gonna use an if uh, a, a, a loop here, right? Four. Again, when we do the loop, we're gonna think about the start and the stop point for this question. The start. It's loop. It's any all numbers from one to num. So I think it's gonna from one to to num, right? So variable i. Because from one, right, it's a start point, and I want to continue it. When this i is smaller or equals to num, we want to continue on it, right? And every time i plus plus, right, go from one to num. Uh, it should be single e equal here, because so I assign a value to to i. I start from one to num every time we are i plus plus. To any one to the i. Now we have a loop to go from one to none. Right, so if I if I cancel the log i, that's basically the same thing for the question number one. But looping from number from one to, to n. It's the same thing here. Right. It's looping from one to none. Or from one to n. And but this time we're not trying to print it out. We're trying to end them up. Right. If you remember the, uh, the 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 quiz we did in the university about the factorial, right? Let me just grab it for you. So M symbol, let's check it out. Because I'm recording the video, so the computer is a little bit slow. So okay. Start free course. And go to the loops. All right. Uh, that allows me to mute. And that is question number. Yeah, fourteen factorials. All right. So this one. What is that? No, this is not the answer. So the answer for this one. Is for variable i equals to twelve. Uh, i is bigger than zero. I minus minus. Right. So the way we did it was we have a solution. Right. Start from one here, and every time we just say solution, we just multiply uh, i to the solution and, uh, and then we just cancel the log the solution uh, this is how, I, how we did it if you're checking your answers you should have something similar to this one All right so the factorial is multiply numbers from 12 to 1 or from, from 1 to 12 and this time we're, instead of multiply we're trying to add them up sum them up so we're going to similar thing. We're going to have a something called solution to store our answers. Otherwise, we cannot end them up here. We cannot just say i plus uh, i plus one plus i plus two. Uh, it's not going to work. You cannot do that here. We need a storage to store our answers. So we're going to have a variable solution. Same thing here. All right. So this time we're not going to start with one because we'll sum them up. If I just put one here, it's gonna influence our result. So I'm gonna put a zero here. Stuff if it could be a zero plus anything else, just not gonna influence the answer. All right, so this, if it's multiply, I'm gonna multiply one, right? And if it's sum, I'm gonna sum from zero. 
right? So we're going to sum our like all the numbers from one to num into the solution. So the solution is equals to the solution plus one uh, plus i. So it's going to be plus equals i. Right. Well, keep adding i to the solution. And now if I just return a solution, I have a function adds up all the numbers from one to num. I'm gonna try it out. So I can console.log uh, simple even adding. Uh, four. Right, one plus two plus three plus four. And we have it ten. Right, one plus two equals three. And plus three right, equal to right, one plus six and plus four, which is ten. Right. If I do a 5 here, it's going to be 15. Right. So I have a n all numbers from 1 to num. And now, I hope, that, I hope this, this part makes sense, right? We'll have storage, store the our, our answers, keep adding i into it, and return it out. Right. So now we we'll need to do one thing. We need to filter out the old number, right? Just leave the, which is on, only sum it if i is even, right? We filled out the old numbers. Right, only add it if i is even. Right, how do I check if i is even? We have if i is even, and we do that, right? Else we can just ignore that. We don't, we can skip it. Right, if i is even, we do it. I is even is not English. It's not JavaScript. It's just English. We're gonna translate it into code. So if I modular two equal to zero, right, something with that. That means that is even number. If I modular two equals zero, that's an even number. So then we're adding the i to the solution. All right. So now if I give a five, it's gonna only have even numbers two plus four, which is six. Right, so all the old numbers are ignored. So if uh, if i mod two is not to, is not to uh, zero, we we'll just skip it. Right, we're not gonna do the code inside here. Just skip it. Go to the next loop. Right, so this is a case you need to combine the if case and the for loop. Right, so think first, first thing is just a for loop without a if case, and then just add if case inside it. Because we only want to do it for the even numbers. We don't want to add all the numbers. Just only want to add the even numbers. Right, so. To be able to, to finish this function by yourself, it's not, not easy. For beginners, it's not easy. And but so what, what I expect you to be able to do is like you if I give you a function like this, you should be able to like to, 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 to run this function by your by, by your own, not not run really run it, just you know, give you a pen and paper and tell me what is the output for this function. If I someone write this one here and tell you I'm gonna put 10 here, you're gonna think about it. Okay, first loop. And second loop, third loop, and tell me what is the answer for that. You need to be able, able to, to analyze it, to understand what, what, what they are trying to do here. I think of, okay, so, so we're passing 10 here, right? So now I'm equal to 10. So variable i is equal to 1, i'm smaller than 10, i plus plus, right? So you're going you're gonna to bring in the number and try to analyze it. Right, so it's going to be if i equal to 1, 1 is smaller than 10. So we're going to do this for loop. Right, so if one module two equals zero, no, it's not. So we're gonna skip the first loop and any one to the i, any one to the i, i become two. Right, so one i equals two, two module two equals to zero. So we're gonna add i to the solution. So adding two to the solution, and uh, then go to next loop. I equals three, three module two is not to zero. We're gonna skip it and go to next one. And four. Form to two equal to zero, so we're gonna add in the four to the zero to the to the to the solution, and five is skipped and adding six, and uh, 
seven is skipped, we're ending eight. And nine is skipped, we're ending ten. And so the, the final equation we're getting in solution is two plus four plus six plus eight plus ten. And the answer is thirty. So the output of this catalog is should be thirty. I should be able to analyze it. And as after like, as 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 you keep keep coding, keep keep analyzing stuff, you're gonna get any more experience to be able to write by yourself after you've seen enough questions like this. Right, so this is answer for question number four. And uh, again, this is just a one solution. We also have multiple solutions for this one. Right. So another one, actually, it's a better solution. Um, the only part we're going to change is this for loop here. Right, this one. This is solution number one. I'm going to put it here. Solution number one. And for this one, we also have another solution, number two. Right, this time, again, we still have a variable zero here. We still have a return, but we're going to change the for loop. i equal to one, and i minus equal to uh, num. But this time, we're not going to do i plus plus here. Actually, we're gonna, i also going to start from, from, from zero. Right. So... What we're gonna do here is we're gonna inst instead of plus i plus plus, I'm gonna say i plus equal to two. Every time we're adding two to the i, and then we just do solution plus equal to i. Right? Think about it. And this is a a solution number two here. So this this case, instead of adding one to the i step. We're adding two to it, so i is always going to be even number. We don't have to check it, right? Zero, zero two, four, six, eight is always going to be even number. I don't even need to check if i is even or odd, because I know it's going to always be even. And the reason I say this is a better solution because that's faster than the first one. Think about it. You have you passing a ten here. The first one gonna do a loop ten times, and this one just do it five times. Have a hundred, this one only do fifty times. I say save the save the half times, save the half half times of to to run in the actual loops there, and we also save the time to do the if case. Right, so that's another solution for this one. Every time we're adding two to the i instead of one, so we don't have to check in if i is even or odd. All right, so again, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, this is how this assignment is designed. It is hard, I know. And uh, you, right now, you just need to be able to analyze this function to be able to, to know the answers if anyone put this question in front of you. All right. And after you finish the learning here, like for the rest of four months, you should be able to do this one. Because we're going to keep using, we're not going to learn any other languages. We're going to focus on JavaScript for like, the rest of this uh, few months. So after the learning here, you should be able to do these functions. Right now, you just need to be able to analyze it and uh, understand uh, the process here. How how like how do, how do we come up with this uh, solution for this question? All right. But if I just give you another question, like a simple old ending, you need to be able to transfer this one to be an old ending. And right now it's any odd even numbers. How do we change it to any odd odd numbers? Even uh, numbers we're ending zero plus two plus four. Right, all ending should be one plus three plus five, and keep going. Anyone can tell me what we should change for this one? Um, zero, one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's good enough. Totally good enough to 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 for 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 now, right? Change it to one, so it's changing one, one plus two, and plus two, plus two, so it's gonna be one, three, five, seven, nine. All right, so that is what we yeah, expect to be able to do after this assignment. All right. So this is question number four. 
And uh, let me see question number five here. I'm going to give you some hint for the question number five because this one is uh, is much harder than, than even than the number four here. Right, it's, it's much harder. Because this one we are we are dealing with some uh, letters that give me some strings. Strings is is, is just you know, more complex than just numbers. So just give you some hint for this one. Question number five. Right, I'm going to put right here. It is hard, otherwise they won't pay you so much money to be a developer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well, know that's hard. <laughs> but, but that's hard, but also fun, right? You're working on those things every day. You're getting different tasks every day, not repeating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Daily work. Yeah. Right, so again, let's read this question here, writing the function letter capitalize string. So again, so it's going to be a function called letter capitalize. So it's going to be function. Later, capitalize, str. Right, that is for state. We know the function name and takes the string. Right now, let's let's say what this function asks you to do here. So it asks you to uh, capitalize the first letter of each word, and then give words will be separated by only one space. Right, so the giving words is just some some some, some rules set up. The words will be set separated by only one space. That's also a hint. Um, right, so when I first time see this question, it's, it's also like a mess. I need to think about it. All right, so this also takes uh, need you to have some problem solving skills, which is just be able to separate this heavy task into smaller tasks. Like you're gonna think about how do you solve this hard problem? Try to try to separate that into smaller problems. So this one, they also give some examples. All right, so if I say the capitalize hello world, you need to I need to capitalize the H and the W here. And so we're passing something else. Also going to capitalize the first characters of each word. All right. So the, the so if I'm I'm giving this task, I'm going to think about okay, what is my first step? I need to firstly separate the words, right? Separate the words. So I can get in the first word, second word, second third word, fourth word, and now, now I can I can I can looking for the uh, first character of each word, right? Separate the words, and then I looking for the first character each of words, and then I, I I can just change it to the uppercase, right? To just capitalize it. Yeah. Capitalize it, and that's it. That's three step stuff. There may be, there may be like a, a, a tons of solutions, but this is um the, maybe the first first one comes to your mind. Maybe you comes up with another another solution. Right. This, for this this one it has a lot of solutions here. For this is a, the first uh, a way I saw sort of. So separate the words. How do I do it? And uh, here are some hints. There is also a function to separate a string into an array of words, which is called split. All right, let's take a if you Google it, it's also give you a solution. Let me just quickly give you what is uh, what split can do here. So a split, um, if you're passing a word, say hello, word, I should just say hello, right? Hello dot split. Split actually takes the input. If I put empty string here, it's gonna split the string into an array of characters, an array of H-E-L-A-O. Right. If we put a hello word, it's going to be a string of each character, H-E-L-L-O uh, -L -L and space, W-O-R-L-D, right? So it's a split, what split does? Split a, a string into a list of, a list of characters, right? And there are other ways to using split. If you when you use split, if you pass in instead of empty string, you pass in some character here. For example, I put the I put a space here. It's going to using the space to separate your word. Right? For example, I put space. So you're going to use space to separate your things. Right? Have the the, the 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 part before the space and the part after space. I have hello world. 
if I do, uh, if I want to split it by the character O here, it's going to be uh, the part of string before the O, uh, before the second O, and after the second O. Right. So in, in here, we want to separate the words. So we are going to separate by the empty space here. So each word, right, so the hello word is going to be hello and the word. And this one going to be you cannot find the answer online. Right? So each word is going to be, be in, in the array by itself. Right? Separate them out. Right? This is answer also, this is why the hint given here, the given words will be separated by only one space. So we're going to be using the space to split them. Right, so let's, let's do it. So variable, the string array, or you can call it the words array, let's just call it words, equals to um, the str, right, that is a string, I want to do a split, uh, space string, right? So that is going to split your words into array of words, right? array of words. Right? It's going to be hello and a word, or like a, like any sentence, good morning, right? two words. And how do I get the first character of each word? Right? For the first word, like a hello, if I want to get its first character, I can just call a uh, square bracket for zero, that's a zero index. Right, second index is going to be E, uh, solid one, fourth one. Right, so that's the first character. That's how you're getting the first character. Right, hello with the square bracket zero. And uh, also, how to capitalize it. There's a function, if you search it, how to capitalize string in JavaScript. I can tell you, you can use in. Uh, Function called to uppercase. Gonna change edge into capitalized edge. Right? So what we need to do here is if I get a hello, right, if I get a hello, I need to get in its first character H and to uppercase and give me the capitalized edge. And uh, to plus the rest part of it, right? The rest part of it, uh, how to how to how to split it? Um, you can using a either using the slice or using the substring. Uh, that's uh, both both functions can help you do that. Also, Google it. So hello, the slice, the slice the zero index here. Oops, zero index uh, one. Oh, yeah, slice. Oh, hello should be a string. Hello, the slice one here. I'm gonna give you the. Oops, I forget. I somehow remove the quotation marks here. All right, it's gonna give you the the part without the first character. All right, that's what, that's what slice does. All right. So what we need to do is, if I'm getting a hello, I want to getting the first character of it and change it to uppercase and, and then plus the rest part of it it's gonna be hello the slice one All right so I'm getting a capitalized hello All right so now I know how to do how to transfer the uppercase for one word, and now I have a list of words. How can I do it? Loop it. Do the same thing for each word inside the array. Right? So you can use in for loop. Since there's an array, you can also use in for each loop, or even using map. It all works. So it comes like different solutions here. You can use it any way you want. Here I'm going to use it in a for loop. Loop through an array, right? So we did this many times. 
I start from zero, and I smaller than words the length, and I plus plus, I lose to a ray. Or if you like, I actually prefer to have a variable length here equals to words the length, so I can just use in the length here. This is actually a better practice. Because this one is running faster. You don't have to check in the words the length many times, because that's something never changed. Right, so we are having the loop loop from the first first one in the words array and the, until the last one. And we're gonna just do this thing here. Right, do this thing here. So hello here stands for each word inside the array. Right, so each word is gonna be words ice. Right, that's an ice item of it. That's a first word, second word, third word. And I want the zero characters of it. Which is going to be zero. To uppercase. And plus, hello again. Hello going to be words ice item. The slice one. All right. So this is uh, let me come out this console log. So this is uh, the way we're getting the uh, each up, uh, uppercase words, and also we need to combine them together, right? So right now they're, they're still just in an array. We need to make it back to a string, separated by just a space. All right, we need to. Combine them back. So uh, in here, if you search it back, how to come, how to transfer a array of string into just one string? Google search it. They're also going to be the answer for that. Or you can just use in loops. I right, so loop from the first one until the last one, and using plus plus them together. Right, that also works. All right. So for example, you can have a, a again a, a solution. Right. It's empty. And keep adding stuff to it. I'm right, going to say. Uh, Solution is equal to is plus equals to that. Right, adding the things to the solution, and after you finish that, just return a solution. Right, let's try it out. So we can do a console dot log the letter capitalize. So let's say uh, hello world, and I'm giving, I'm giving a hello world, but I'm missing a space between them. So I'm gonna do a I'm gonna also add in a space. I'm gonna add in the, uh, in the front. I'm gonna add in a, a space plus that. I'm right, gonna be space hello space word, and that means you also need to remove the extra space at the start. All right. So re when we return, I'm gonna return the solution dot slice one. I right, remove the extra space at the start. That is a uh, one way to solve it. Right. Okay. Another example can be okay. You cannot write answer. Right. It's gonna be, it's gonna work. And if you Google search about like how to transfer array into a, a string, I think you can also using a join method here. Like I have this this word here. Um, you can also. Do a join here. I forgot actually. I forgot how you do it. I have the answer for that. I'm mean, just checking for join. JavaScript join. Yeah. So if I have an array with a capitalized fruit, I can use in join to to make it as as a string here. Right, so let me see how you do it. Words I zero. I have I have each words. Yeah, it's better to using a map, but using follow piece also work. So then I'm going to put that in my solution array. So I'm gonna be solution. The push it. Uh, into my array, so I have an array of capitalized words. 
and uh, when I return it, I can return solution the join uh, with a space. I think that's how it works. Let me just try it. Yeah, it's the same thing. You can this this way also works. Right. And using join to change its uh, string array back to words. So if you without it, the solution is an array with four words, and you see join or join them together. And with a uh, with with that str uh, empty string uh, empty space to separate them, and uh, this also works. So you don't have to slice the first character. Uh, this is one solution. I'm gonna take some time to think about it, because this one is a little bit harder. Because you need to firstly transfer that into string, uh, transfer that into array, and capitalize it. Combine it and transmit it back. So it takes you actually three steps to do it. You're gonna have to be able to uh, to think about how many steps you need to do it and uh, be able to do each steps. And uh, last year, when I gave this question to the student, they actually surprised me, giving me a very easy answer for this one. <laughs> I, I didn't think exactly can do that in this way. So if I give you a, a SDR, right? Uh, a you uh, return, right? If you give a string, right? Looks like that. I think about you can using split on it, split that into a, you know, a, actually not this one. Hold on. Uh, no, 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 not this question. Not this question. Yeah, this question I think just 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 one solution, just this one. Yeah, that's a, that's the next question. I'm gonna leave that to the next time. Yeah, it's the next question. Yeah, this one asking actually I think this is a, this is a only one solution. This one maybe there's a more, but I just didn't haven't haven't think about it. Right, think. Right, so this is a uh, the the solution for this one. You just need to separate that into three steps. Right. So to think about, let me just come up to the to original one because that's easier to come up with. So, right. So you need a, a solution to store the answer. Let me just bring it back. Right. You need a solution to uh, to store the answer, and uh, uh, for every word you need to deal with it. Right. So every word inside the array, you grab the word, capitalize the first character, and the plus the rest part of it. And uh, adding that one into the solution, adding that one to the solution, and separate the words, find the first character, and capitalize it. Right, so no matter how long the string is going to be, we will be able to capitalize the first character. All right. We'll be able to capitalize the first character. Right, so that's our answers for the first five questions, and you can. I'm gonna upload the videos to YouTube. We can keep working on the 